Hey yo, what's up guys? Today in this video lecture, we are going to solve another problem in Array's concept over interview bit. Our today's problem is a noble integer problem. Okay, so let's get started. Without seeing the question, I'm going to explain you the question, what they were trying to ask. We are given an integer array, say for example, it consists of elements like 5, 4, D, or maybe 2, and 2. This is an array. So we are going to find one such, uh, we, we, we want to find one such element such that the value of the element is equal to the number of elements which are greater than that element in the given array. Say for example, in this particular array, we are having, okay, let's add another variable before. So if you consider three, there are exactly three numbers in the given array which were greater than three. So here three is equals to equals to the number of elements which were greater than three. So then three is considered to be the noble integer. That is what they've said in the question. So basically in order to solve this question in the brute forcing method, we are going to implement a for loop which is for capturing each element okay capturing each element the so the first for loop is going to be for capturing each and every element let's capture five first okay and for the second for loop we are going to compare so this is for comparison whether the elements the remaining elements in the array are greater than five or not so so we after going into the loop if it is greater than 5 then we are gonna if greater we are gonna increase the count value plus plus so before starting the second for loop we are gonna declare a variable count which is equals to 0 and at by the end of the second for loop we are gonna check if condition whether the element a of i is equals to equals to the value count if such value exists we are going to return minus one so after this okay yeah if no such element exists we are going to return minus one so sorry this is should be one so this is what they were asked in the problem if there is a noble integer in the given array we are required to return one if no such element exists we are going to return minus one so this is what they have asked so this has to be solved in order of n square which is not at all a good idea in the competitive programming questions by big big companies so they want at max the time complexity should be something like order of n log n as we know all the sorting algorithms we have is a are of order of one log n exceptional case is for this uh, counting sort so we are gonna make use the sorting technique so that the order of n square will be reduced to order of n log n let's see how we can do that okay so for the same thing if you are sorting this array let's sort the array the given array so that it becomes 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, next we are going to implement a for loop for traversing. Okay. For traversing through the array. The traversing through the array. And we are checking whether we are capturing each and every element. And we are checking whether there are same number of elements on the right side of the sorted array so three is there we are having three elements right to that of value three so then it is a true we are going to return one but there is a corner case when there is a duplicate value so while coming here we are having three there are exactly three elements which are right side to the value three so it should return one according to our logic but we shouldn't do that so this thing should basically return minus one because there are only two elements which are greater than three so we need to consider a condition there is no duplicate value 
immediately next to the given value. So we are going to implement such a logic. First of all, we are going to sort the array. This is a dot begin to a dot end. So we have sorted the array. This implements a merge sort. This is a merge sort basically. So which is order of n log n. I'm sorry for that. Order of n log n. So this is basically order of n log n. I'm going to declare another variable in n which has the size of the given input array. So now we are going to traverse through the loop traverse through the given input array till n minus 1. I am going to shortly explain you why we are considering n minus 1. Say for example here we are having the last element as 6. So after 6 there are no elements. So if there are no elements we are not even required to check. We already know there are no elements after the last element. So if the last element is positive there are no such elements. So we are just required to check till n minus 1th element. So I am doing the same. I mean sorry. Uh, till the n minus 2th element. So I am considering the logic as n minus 1. But there is an exceptional case when the last element is 0. Say for example all these values are negative. Maybe something of this sort. Minus 3. Minus 4. Minus 5. Minus 6. So in this case the last value is 0 and there are no elements after the 0. So it means the value is 0. So here 0 is a noble integer. So we are going to capture that case. So before even going there, before even going into the for loop, we are going to check whether the last element of the sorted array is equals to equals to 0. So it is equals to equals to 0, then directly we are going to return the value 1. Why? Why? Because if the maximum value is itself 0, we are very sure that all the elements before 0 are less than or equals to 0 and for the negative numbers we can have we cannot have negative number of elements right the number of elements is always greater than or equals to 0 so for the negative elements also we are not required to consider so that is another case when a of n minus 1 is less than 0 so if the maximum value is less than 0 say this is minus 1 then we are not even required to traverse through the whole array. In the very beginning itself, we can write return minus 1. Okay. If not of the any above cases, then we are going into the loop. And inside the loop, we are going to check if a of i is equal to equal to n minus i minus 1. So what this basically does is we are checking whether the value inside the ith element in the given array is equals to the number of elements right to it. And also we are going to implement a small logic for checking whether the next element is a duplicate of this current element. So we are going to also check. So this should be not equals to. We are checking whether the next there is no duplicate immediately next to the given element. So in such cases we are going to return 1. Okay. Else if no such number exists we are going to return minus 1. So this is our logic basically. Let me remove all this extra data. Okay. Let's test our code. Yeah, we got everything is right. Yeah, that's it. Uh, all test cases for past. So that's it for this video, guys. If you like my video, please share my video uh, with your friends. And if you like my channel, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications if you want to see more videos like this without missing. Thank you, guys.